stories and talk to each other and find out what's going on. So by the same token, I wonder why we can't do that here in Simcoe and build a facility which would become a home for community as well. A place where people could go for whether it's skating or swimming or even potentially something for use by the seniors. All those things could be in one place where people can get together. Um, we think of things like when our kids are at skating, sometimes a two or three hour lesson that might allow moms and dads to go and use a running track to have a walk or grandparents could access uh, the senior center. If it was there, they could get a chance to access those facilities. Somebody else could be going for a swimming lesson in the family while someone's on the ice for those things. And a multi-use facility would allow those things to happen. Uh, and when we talked about Fanshawe College being brought into the mix, again, similar to what minor hockey was saying, we have leadership roles in our club. We bring the kids up to 17 or 18 years old, and then they're off to university or college somewhere else. So why not bring some of that back here to our clubs? And we can utilize some of those kids when they're coming to Fanshawe, or maybe even offer it to our kids a chance to further their education right here in our home county. Uh, personally, when I've talked to my, my husband as a physician about recruiting new physicians, it's hard enough to do. And anything we can do that would make it better to bring them here is always welcomed. Being able to show we have new modern facilities is always something that would be helpful to bring new physicians here. So finally, I just ask you to consider bringing the new facility here. I think it would be great, as I said, a home for community, uh, not just for figure skating and for ice sports, but I think it would be wonderful, something that would allow the whole community to link together under one roof. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions from Council? Councilor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the deputation, if Talbot Gardens was closed and the people from Waterford had to go to another skating rink as an overflow or, or something, if the current arena couldn't hold them, where in Haldeman would you go? We're in Haldeman or in Norfolk? Haldeman. Haldeman. What's um, the closest one to Waterford? We've actually had, we have used ice when we've had to get ice at other arenas because it's not available in Waterford. We have used some from Delhi before or Port Dover. Um, we've never actually looked at going to Haldeman because we've always been able to work with county staff to get ice here in Norfolk when we needed it. But if we had to go, um, I suppose we might look at Hagersville, somewhere else. That would be the closest arena to Waterford? It might be, yeah, for us, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jennifer, it doesn't look like there are any other questions, so thank you very much for your deputation and uh, keep up thank the good you. work. Thank you. I need a, mo a mover to uh, that the deputation of Jennifer Bard, I hope I got it right that time, and uh, received as information. Councillor Columbus, all those in favor? That is carried. Moving on to Ryan Vandenbush. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, some of you, most of you guys know me around this table, but uh, <laughs> for those of you that don't, uh, my name is Ryan Vandenbush. Uh, I was born here in Simcoe, Ontario, and, and grew up in Delhi. Played all my minor hockey in Delhi, and um, moved away for about 18 years, and come back to raise my family here. And I have a home in Victoria, and my kids go to school in Port Dover, and play all their minor hockey in Port Dover. Um, I am 100% for a, a community-minded uh, uh, hub. That's good for all of Norfolk County. Um, I got a letter here that I want to read that uh, went out to the Norfolk Pros, so I'm speaking basically on behalf of the uh, Norfolk Pros uh, with regards to a community hub. Um, so I'm gonna read it to you, and then I'll maybe touch on a few other things, and if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. But uh, it's regarding the community hub uh, initiative for Norfolk. So this went out to, to uh, Rob Blake. It's been signed by Rob Blake, Nelson Emerson, John Stevens, Dwayne Rolson, myself, and I got some other verbals from uh, Jordy Kinnear and uh, um, Rick Kowalski, uh, but they couldn't get their signature on here in time. But it goes like this. As professional athletes, uh, we are proud to come from Norfolk County. It will always be our home. It will always be in our hearts and our minds. We understand that Norfolk County will be discussing a report uh, regarding the draft parks facilities and recreation master plan on April 4th. We also understand that a report has 
recommended that Norfolk investigate in depth the potential for a wide range of multiple use opportunities within a single family, uh, sorry, within a single facility venue, as well as a multi partner participation. Uh, we write collectively to ask that you please act on this recommendation and at least explore the possibilities of what such a multi-use facility could bring to Norfolk County as a whole. As a professional athletes, as professional athletes from Norfolk County, we understand firsthand how important first class facilities are for young athletes to be able to reach their full potential and not have to leave the area to pursue their dreams. We have also each traveled the continent and can say firsthand that Norfolk is one of the few places that does not have a modern day multi-purpose community hub facility in place. Simply put, we come home and we see that Norfolk is lagging behind and we wonder why. Our experience in sports tells us that kids cry out for better integrated facilities. It also tells us that everyone, including children, adults, seniors, and special needs groups can benefit from programming that can be made available through such facilities to help the community as a whole grow and learn and prosper. If, as a bonus, a community hub would have would pave the way for Fanshaw College to expand their program in Norfolk as well. We see nothing but upside when we think about the possibilities. We hope that you on council will think about the possibilities as well. We hope that you will at least instruct your staff to explore them. Yours truly, Rob Blake, Nelson Emerson, John Stevens, Wayne Rolson, and myself. Um, fundraising, I've, I've also talked to these guys about, uh, you know, if we go ahead and, and, and make this decision to move forward, would you guys be on hand to help do some fundraising? And, and they had no problem with that at all. So we've got them behind us for that as well. Um, they do come back here in the summer times and something could be coordinated. Um, Sticks and Picks, there's a foundation that just started called Sticks and Picks, who's working very closely with the Barra First Shift program. Uh, this previous year, this past winter, we started our first program. And uh, how it works is uh, uh, any kid between the ages of 6 and 10 that's never played any organized hockey has an opportunity to play hockey. Um, for $200, they get outfitted and equipment from head to toe, including skates, helmet, gloves, and everything in between. Um, and then they also get six one-hour ice sessions. Um, Bauer First Shift program has been doing this for the last five years, and of the 45 kids that come out, that's the maximum you can get on the ice um, for this program. 86% of them go on to sign for play minor hockey the following year. So we just did it this year, and we'll, we'll have that study done very shortly, and we continue to do it year after year. So this will be an ongoing program. So we are developing more hockey players at, at the youth level at, a, at an affordable price. Um, we find that that's a good age level because at that time, you know, there's a lot of parents that are sitting on the fence and you don't, you don't know if your child's going to be committed to the game or not. It's a lot of money coming out of your pocket initially. So this kind of gets their feet wet into the program and then they can make a decision after that. So that's all I got to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from council? If not, thank you very much, Ryan, for your deputation and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, sorry. I need a motion to receive the deputation as information from Ryan Vandenbush, Councillor Oliver. All those in favor? That is carried. Moving on to Corey Moulton. Hope I pronounced that right, but I'm sure you'll correct me. <laughs> you have 10 minutes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Norfolk Council. Um, I had submitted a couple different documents earlier today. I hope you guys all received those just to make it quicker and save some time for sure. So my name is Corey Moulton. I'm a lifelong resident of Simcoe, father of four, husband of a local business owner and also property owner here in town. Today I'm here to represent Simcoe Minor Baseball Association as their president. Simcoe Minor Baseball has been a passion of mine and I've been the president for the last six years. Our organization has been able to boost and retain its registration by coming up with better programs, offering competition and participation at every level from four-year-old t-ball player to senior baseball. We've also been able to offer the advanced player competition that regularly plays against some of the best in the province, interlocking with the Inter-County Baseball Association. 
Our enrollment in 2010 was at 225 players. Since then, we have improved with our improved programs and offering all levels of play and providing off-season training programs to both house league and rep players. In 2016, we exceeded 400 players registered for the season. We have retained and attracted new players each year and continue to grow and looking for more growth in 2017. Simcoe Minor Baseball has also become a spot that allows local Norfolk County rep players from other centers, Port Dover, Delhi, Walsingham, and even Tilsonburg, who are looking to play a higher level of competition. This provides them a spot to do so. We have an agreement with all of our governing bodies that allow the players from these centers to try out in Simcoe for our Tier 1 rep teams. These Tier 1 teams are the teams that participate in Inner County, where they play against centers like Cambridge, Guelph, Waterloo, and Brantford. Playing this higher level of competition has proven to be tremendous for our association. These Tier 1 teams take on, Norfolk, take on a Norfolk component to their rosters with these kids from the other centers trying out, keeping these kids playing locally within the area as opposed to previous times when we had to constantly give releases to players who would then play in London, Bramford, or Hamilton at the Tier 1 level, leaving us unable to field rep teams past the Pee Wee age group. Our association has shown that when able to keep our local athletes here, that we can compete with any of the larger centers in the province, and the results since we made these changes have been incredible. Since 2010, when these changes were made, Simcoe Minor Baseball teams have managed to win 12 different Ontario championships, playing at levels above what a center of our population would normally play at, truly showing that Norfolk County does raise high caliber athletes. In 2016, we had almost maximized all the facilities that were available to us, while still currently, we are doing registrations in 2017 and keeping an eye, a close eye on these registrations as we fear we may have to turn kids away as we are using all the diamond time available to our association. This really is a problem as we see our association now at the point where we can no longer grow or add additional programs. Our executive has agreed that we should be looking at forming a girls softball division and a junior team, but are also trying to figure out how to do this with all of our diamond times already being allocated to existing programs. The lack of diamonds can accommodate the lack of diamonds that can accommodate the different playing dimensions needed for certain age groups is stopping us from growing. I provided an outline of the diamonds in the report I sent to Council. Wee Age currently only has three diamonds available to them, and that's at Lions Park. And the need for another full-size hardball diamond like Memorial Park is obvious if we want to add in any further Bantam, Midget, Junior, or Senior players. As tight as our diamond times are right now, we also have been experiencing the same type of issues during our off season. While the community use of schools program through Grand Erie District School Board was a great idea when drafted, it has also become very popular and has become increasingly difficult to book the appropriate gym times to be able to do the things we need to do in the off season. With limitations of only a couple of gyms that are really big enough to facilitate our programs, these same bigger gyms are the ones also being used by local basketball leagues, volleyball leagues, as well as many other user groups and Norfolk County programs. These are all very great programs to also have in the community, and I fully support the idea of as many sports as possible for different interests and users. Off-season programs that we had developed and ran in the past have had to be scaled down or not run at all due to the larger demand for and lack of proper gym time or indoor facilities. I know that this is, this is also a common problem amongst many of other Norfolk user groups. On a real positive note, Simcoe Minor Baseball has become a very well-recognized association in the baseball community in regards to well-run tournaments and, and respected over our tournaments. Again, for the 2017 season, we will be hosting seven rep tournaments, a midget baseball Ontario provincial championships, as well as five house league tournaments. The rep tournaments that we started five years ago have grown to the point where the financial impact on Norfolk County is quite amazing. In 2017, we will see 95 different teams come to Norfolk County to participate in our tournaments. From Canada, Kingston, to Windsor, Aurelia and Barrie, and all points in between, the beautiful area of Norfolk County being exposed to all of them. The financial sheets that were part of our document I submitted are the numbers that I don't think people realize associations like ours can have on uh, Norfolk County. Teams coming and booking motels in that report are all confirmed and the $200 family spend I listed as a very conservative number 
As I know, coaching and having kids play sports for the last 13 years, a weekend at a tournament is always more money than that. But to put that in perspective, a minimum of 400,000 being brought into Norfolk County through these tournaments is, is, is incredible. Motels in Simcoe, Port Dover, and even campgrounds are benefiting from this, as well as many restaurants. You will also see that tournaments for age groups, Bantam and Midget, are severely reduced numbers, and that is because the Memorial Park is the only full-size diamond available, and we turn many teams away from our tournaments at the Bantam and Midget age groups each year. I know that many other user groups and sports organizations have issues worse and or similar to ours in regards to facilities currently, or in some cases, no facilities for their needs at all. And that is why we are all here today. Several of these organizations also struggle with finding the gym time. And with all the recent talk of the master recreation plan, I felt it necessary to make some of our issues apparent, let others know that they are not alone in these struggles. Norfolk County has a great opportunity right now to address a lot of these problems for the future. As president of Simcoe Minor Baseball, on behalf of our membership and executive, I would like to ask Norfolk County Council to accept the report put forth by Norfolk County staff to move forward, explore opportunities available in regards to a community hub project. The possibilities here are endless, and I believe that so many of the different associations and groups across Norfolk would benefit from this. Just imagine if the swim clubs could host competitions like we do tournaments, or gymnastics clubs could host a gymnastic competition, the financial benefit to the area would become huge. I also believe that many of these groups would make every effort possible to assist in any possible fundraising, and many of us are nonprofits who could assist in maybe applying for trillion grants, etc. As a big supporter of our youth, the Fanshawe component could also be a huge milestone for our area. I've watched many youth graduate from our local schools and sporting programs, go away at considerable cost for programs that could easily be part of an expansion here in town. The ability to draw more of their youth to our area with expanded fan shop facilities could also be a huge benefit to many in Norfolk County as more services and amenities are then needed. So in wrapping up, Norfolk County Council, please adopt the recommendations of the county staff to investigate the possible community hub option that would be good for all in Norfolk in some way or other. Provide opportunity with expanded education facilities, work with all our Norfolk community programs and associations and Fanshawe College to determine the needs locally and move forward and give residents of Norfolk County something to be proud of. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Corey. Very excellent. Any questions from Council? If not, thank you. For, sorry, one, Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not so much a question, Mr. Chairman, but a comment, Corey. And I personally really find the financial data that you've got in your, in your presentation to us very helpful. That's a big Thank number, $400,000 potentially over the course of the year spent in our county by teams coming that's in. That's a so summary, yeah. That, that's, uh, that's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Walter Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the deputation, you mentioned you're having a difficult time finding diamond time in Simcoe? Correct. So do you ever look outside of Simcoe? The problem is right now, especially with uh, popularity of baseball again, you're just, uh, everybody's in the same boat right now. Um, when it comes to tournaments, we have tried to use Delhi in the past. Slow Pitch is a big um, user there Saturdays, so it's not an option to us there. Port Dover, we can't technically book the full-size hardball diamond there. It's not through the county. Um, it's a private thing there. We, you know, we've moved some teams to Waterford to practice. Mm -hmm. We're doing everything we can, but this year, if our numbers keep going the way they are, you know, I really think we have to maybe turn some kids away. Well, as I understand it, Victoria is struggling to find kids. I know St. Williams, you can go there and play ball any day you want. And Port Rowan, we've pulled the only ball diamond, well, the real ball diamond out, and there's one that sits there empty and no one plays it either. Like Most of these are softball diamonds. And, you know, where, we, where we're struggling is from that peewee age group and up. Mm -hmm. And the original softball diamonds aren't big enough to accommodate the dimensions that you're needing for these older kids. Okay, I'm not sure if staff would be able to comment on those other, because Walsingham Park is a hardball. They have diamond. a program out there, yeah. That's a real one, and then the St. Williams ones, they're, they're nice big fields. Would, would Todd, would you be able to answer what teams or kids could play out there? I know we just redid some fencing, we spent some money out there. Yeah, three your worship. I think most of that is adult baseball that's played out there. Um, the difference between the two is you got 60 foot bases to, to 90 foot bases. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And you can't have the base on on the uh, grass line on the infield because it just doesn't work. It, it, it's it's a liability for people getting injured. Um, I'm not positive what it is out there, but uh, I know we have a lot of uh, adult leagues that play there as well. So, okay, thank you, <clears throat> Councillor. Oh, sorry, uh, Mayor Luke. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Corey, thank you for this information um, and again for the work that your organization do. I know the baseball is on the rise. There's mm -hmm. no question. Uh, I want to ask you a question. I, I, in particular, and I understand T-balls at Kinsman, but stalker front and back, with the exception of three weekends, tournaments, according to the information here, the rest of the time, do kids not want to play ball on Saturday and Sunday like it, there's nobody there and yet I think they're fairly well maintained and I, I know they're restricted to mm -hmm. a certain age a mosquito um, etc do you want to just comment on that could they not be a little bit more utilized um, what we find with the rookie mosquito age a lot of those kids are playing baseball during the week and they also participate in soccer on weekends it's always a big conflict. Okay. So in order to allow them to do both sports and, and, you know, find something they like and enjoy all these different sports, that we kind of have to watch out for that as well. And Mr. Chair, thank you, Corey. Though my last question is this. If you look around the county, I, I've counted 21 ball diamonds in Norfolk County that the taxpayer maintains and operates. Um, and, and, I, and I guess my question is, from your point of view, What's the one thing we could do in the way of a facility, ball diamond size? Would it be an adult hard pitch, like a baseball, I guess is the right term? Yeah. But just what would be your top priority? Because I, I, I think from what I read here, there is a shortage of diamond use up at the upper age level. Do you, do you want to just comment on what you believe is the one thing that would be critical? That, that's where we're really struggling, is on a full-size hardball diamond. Um, you know, with just the memorial, um, you can talk to your county staff. You know, we beat, we beat the heck out of that thing last year. They, you know, they couldn't even keep up, keep trying to keep the grass green on it, right? It was a tough year, and we were on there every day, every night, all weekends. Um, but that's definitely where we're struggling. You know, if we could look at doing another diamond or two, like you could do one with a grass and field a full-size one, but you could also, you know, you look at the Dover model where they've gone to an all clay infield yes. so then you can use it for different for age different groups age. as well so there's a couple of different things there that you could look at doing for sure. Well Corey uh, there's nothing I like looking at better than a well used soccer pitch or a well used ball diamond. We're using that's them. and they're being used so that's great thank you very much Mr. Chair. Okay thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on sorry we need to uh, Corey uh, Moulton uh, that the deputation of Kerry Moulton be received as information. Councillor Brunton, all those in favor? That is carried. Moving on to Mike Godley. Welcome, Mike. You have Thank 10 you. minutes. Uh, Councillor no. Geisens, uh, Mr. Chair, I have uh, our head coach, uh, Trent McNichol, and Brian Boyd, one of our senior swimmers. I requested that they come and join me in my request for deputation. Is that... That's fine, okay. as long as you stick with the 10 minutes. Thank you. All right. And uh, do we have my presentation that I sent in? So... Uh, my name is Mike Godley. I'm uh, president of the Norfolk County Hammerheads or the Norfolk Hammerheads Aquatic Club uh, board. Uh, Brian Boyd is one of our gold group swimmers and Trent McNichol is uh, our head coach for the team. Uh, if we could move on to the next. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Um, We've uh, approached council before. I think we're known in the county, but uh, we are a, a competitive, uh, non-for-profit not -for -profit swim team. We've been operating for at least 25 years or so in Norfolk County, uh, but I know there's been a swim team around here for much longer than that. We offer uh, competitive coaching um, and training for our kids in competitive swimming, and uh, you know, one of our goals over the next couple of years is to try to grow this team and uh, help us maintain some viability. As you can see here, uh, this is our membership over the last uh, four years. We've been 
we've been having some struggles uh, in, trying, in trying to grow that team. We hover around the uh, 70, 80 member mark. Um, and part of that is uh, because we're, we're limited in terms of pool time. We'll talk about that in uh, another couple slides. NAC is truly a Norfolk County team. Uh, I put this uh, slide together to give you a sense of where our members come from. And certainly Simcoe, we have a lot of members from Simcoe, but uh, a lot of our members also come from outlying areas. I think you know, our team does represent the county uh, quite well. Um, the one challenge that I will speak of, and I'm going to pass it over to Trent, is um, in terms of maintaining f uh, financial viability, we need funds. And we can get that from membership for sure, but there's a limit to that. Hosting meets is one of the ways that swim teams keep themselves going. Um, and I'm talking a large meet with a couple hundred kids. Okay. That's simply not possible at the Annalise Carpool. Uh, we hosted an Aqua 7. Uh, thank God one of the teams dropped out um, because we didn't have enough space for, for more than just the two teams. Our kids are marshalling, so getting ready for their swims out in the waiting area outside of the change rooms. My son Oliver told me the other day, he said, it's tough to get ready for a race when you're trying to stay warm and you're out in the cold lobby. Um, so, you know, it makes it, it, makes it tough um, when we're trying to run meets. I'll pass it over to Trent here. Thank you. Um, as as uh, Mike was mentioning, there's very, very many cha challenges we have at the Annalise Carpool. Uh, the biggest one we have as a competitive swimming program, both ourselves and the Simple Seals, who unfortunately left, um, is the water temperature and the air quality. Now, I know we're in, uh, in the works of doing with the, dealing with air quality currently right now. But it's exasperated by the fact that we're training in water that exceeds 85 degrees Celsius, or sorry, Fahrenheit on a regular basis. We do take the opportunity once a week with the senior athletes to travel into Brantford on the Tuesday mornings and train in the pool when it's 80, 81 in Brantford. And those have been our most successful workouts of the season so far. Um, we've, we've had a lot of uh, shortcomings in terms of our availability, or sorry, the pool's availability in terms of booking the hours that we require as a, as a competitive program. It's never easy and there's always going to be a crossover between city demands and the demands of the private teams as well. And what's happening in other large facilities is they have the room and space to accommodate all the people at the same time. So as the head coach of the program, it's my job to boast a little bit right now about our great successes that we've had over the last three or four years. But what I'd rather do actually is boast a little bit more about the things that aren't happening at the North Focus or the Annalise Carpool. Right, so I want to boast about um, how good the single dive swimming team would be, the diving team, the water polo team, all right? anything that involves the pool facilities that we're not using properly because it's just an inadequate pool. All right? It's past this time, it's past this date. All right? I'm, I'm a Brantford boy. I grew up and, and trained in Brantford with the Brantford Aquatic Club for 19 years. All right? um, I started in the facility when it was open in 74. Right? And still am there on once a week uh, with my athletes now. And what's unique about the Brantford facility is it was state of the art in 74, All right? And here we are 40 years later and it's still state of the art because they've upkept that facility over that period, constantly renovating, constantly fixing, constantly enlarging and make it more of a community hub like we're looking for here in, in Norfolk County, All right? Um, this morning when we left the workout in Brantford, we passed by the new pool that they've added on, which is already larger than our pool by twice the size. And inside of that, right, they had a senior fitness program going on. Lane swims happening in the main pool. We left our lane swims. Synchronized swimming was going on. Lessons were starting up for the day. Right, that's how an aquatic facility is being run and running run properly. And that's what we should be doing in Norfolk County. All right, I'm gonna hand it off to Brian and he's gonna discuss quickly some of the problems that he's dealing with as an athlete. My name is Brian Boyd, and I'm a senior swimmer for the Norfolk Hammerheads Aquatic Club. I would first like to share that I live in Langton, and I have to drive an hour to Bramford every Tuesday for practice, as well as half an hour to Simcoe pretty much all the other days of the week. As a Langton resident, I know firsthand a new pool in Simcoe would not only be used by residents of Simcoe, but also the surrounding areas in Norfolk. 
I am also a member of the Holy Trinity Titan swim team, therefore I use the pool very often. The most difficult aspect of training in the Annalise Car Aquatic Center is the pool deck air quality. This is an issue that has been addressed time and time again with little results. Even with the numerous tries in improving the ventilation system, it is still difficult to breathe on deck, and it only gets worse the more the pool gets stirred up from swimming in it. Chlorine cough is a commonplace occurrence. In my many years as a swimmer, I have used numerous other pools for meets and swimming, and all these pools and at all these pools, I have not experienced these same difficulties with breathing in the chlorine. This leads to the second biggest hurdle I have to contend with while swimming at the Annalise Carr Aquatic Center, the pool, the pool temperature. It is a lucky occasion when the pool is only slightly too warm, because any other day it is much too hot to get in a good practice. The heat drains your energy, makes your arms feel heavy, and overall dehydrates you very quickly. The pool temperature, coupled with the poor air quality, has had me finish numerous practices with a headache, a terrible cough, and suboptimal results. I would like to compare the pool temperature and air quality to that of the Wayne Gretzky Sports Centre in Brantford. Despite being a much bigger pool, the air quality and temperature are seldom even comparable to how poor the quality is at the Annalise Car Aquatic Centre. As well, the temperature of the Brantford pool itself is in general much cooler. On occasion, I have practiced in warmer water at the Brantford pool, but the good air quality prevents any problems from arising at the scale that which they do at the Annalise Car Aquatic Center. The final problem with the Annalise Car Aquatic Center pool that I would like to discuss is its size. Being a five lane pool, it already has less space than most other pools, which have between six and eight lanes. As well, the actual width of each lane is far less than average. All five lanes of the Annalise Car Aquatic Center pool fit into f only four lanes at the Wilmot pool, which has fairly average with lane widths. Taking that into consideration, the Annalise Car Aquatic Center has a four lane pool with five lanes mashed into it. During an average practice with anywhere from three to six swimmers per lane, collisions are often and are detrimental to what we are working to achieve during each practice. A new pool in Simcoe would allow the younger um, Norfolk Hammerheads Aquatic club swimmers to have the chance to continue their swimming careers without many of the difficulties that I have had to endure while swimming at the Annalise Car Aquatic Center. A bigger pool would allow for Norfolk Hammerheads to grow as it is limited in numbers due to the undersized pool and sparse pool times, both of which would be addressed with the construction of a new pool facility. So we are obviously in favor of uh, looking at a new facility. Uh, I think we've made that clear in the past as well as now. Uh, and I think the idea of this community hub like they have up in Wilmot, uh, it's a brilliant idea because it brings, uh, it brings those facilities together. Dry land training, you know, our kids could use the, uh, you know, could use the um, uh, weight room, uh, gym facility, along with their training. Um, Parents, you know, I have a I have a pay pass up at Wayne Gretzky that I use every Tuesday morning. Uh, you know, so they're making a little bit of extra money off of me in, in addition to the rent. Um, what we would recommend uh, is that we look at separating those pools out because there's a lot of different needs. We have a lot of seniors in our community, and swimming is a great way to keep active. Um, you know, young kids. Yeah, but one they, minute, sir. Sorry. But they need obviously different temperatures than we do. Um, we would obviously like to uh, grow our program, and I think having more time and space would allow us to do that. Uh, we've, been, we've lost kids. We've had uh, young swimmers, seven to nine years old, practicing at 7.30 to 8.30 in the evening. Uh, it doesn't work. Now, county staff have helped us, and we're finding more time, but we're still quite limited. Uh, one of my last points is that uh, meats can be a, lo a good source of revenue for the pool. I priced out a meat at uh, Brantford, and uh, the facility cost alone would be six thousand dollars per meet. Um, you know, if we had the right facility, we could rent it out to our team and other teams to run a large meet. I just want to close with a quick story about uh, a gentleman I met actually at the Wayne Gretzky uh, gym. Uh, Walt is—he's uh, in his 80s. Um, you know, he comes to the gym. He's there 5:30 in the morning. Um, he's talking to people. He's talking. You know, he does a little bit of workout. He talks. And then I see him going in the change room at about 7 o'clock to go and swim, to swim in the pool. It keeps him healthy. You know, he's, he's physically fit. He's, you know, emotionally, psychologically, socially fit. He's interacting with people. 
The reason he can do that is because that facility is there. And I think if we looked at something like that, I think we would, you would find that it would be well used in our community. Any Thank you very much. Your time, I'm sorry, is up. Mayor Luke. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for being here and uh, for the work you do with our young athletes. Mike, a question. I, I have visited the Gretzky Center pool. I've also Wilmot, which I think is one of the most beautiful pools I've ever, facilities I've ever been, been in. Um, how many uh, competitive lanes at the Wilmot uh, pool? I, I, I don't know. They weren't, it wasn't being it's used. And in the Gretzky, I know there's several pools. I think there are three there. There's three. Three, uh, yeah. Pools, yes. There are eight lane as well. So if I may, Mr. Chair, uh, for good competitive meets and uh, to meet the needs of a competitive swim team, um, eight lanes with a, with a substantial room for each lane is, would be sufficient. I would say, yeah, eight to ten would, would do quite well. And the other thing before I leave uh, these uh, gentlemen, uh, with my questions, Mr. Chair, the, it, it seems also the facilities I've seen, it's so critical to have the competitive school and then, as you referred to it, the seniors pool, but the warmer pool. Is, 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 that would be pretty well a must, I would think, today if you were going to redo. I know, I know nothing about swimming, obviously. I, would say I know I get wet. <laughs> That's about and it. As a parent, I mean, I, I have limited knowledge, but I, I think having... Uh, a cooler facility and something more therapy that has a, vari a variable temperature. I think that would be a huge benefit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Further from Council? Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks, gentlemen, for your presentation. I guess to you, Mike, as President, uh, I, uh, could you, in, in crystal balling a little bit for us, if we did have a facility that you've suggested and that we've been talking about today and earlier, how much of an increase do you think you would have in terms of your club? How many more young swimmers would you be able to attract, do you think, uh, both for uh, social and, and physical fitness and other purposes? Well, in terms of our team, I could see us getting up to the 100 swimmer mark easily. Uh, you know, we are limited by time right now, and if that time were open, we could, we could fill that, do a lot of advertising. I know Wilmont is upwards of 120. Oh, more than 160. More. 160 swimmers, you know, and you throw the Fanshawe piece in there too. There's no reason we couldn't have, you know, Fanshawe swimmers uh, come and join us. So. Nothing further. Thank you very much, and keep up your good work. I need a motion to the deputation of uh, Mike Godley be received as information. Councillor Brunton. All those in favor? That is carried. Moving on to Kim Hoffman. Good afternoon, Chairman and Council. I ha I'm starting off with good afternoon. It's still afternoon, so that's good. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I know 10 minutes. Mine will be short and sweet. Um, my name is Kim Huffman, and I live in Waterford. Obviously, I'm not from Ward 5. I'm from Ward 7. As a resident of Waterford, I, su I support the Community Hub proposal. Although we have seven wards, we are all Norfolk County. I think that's a very important piece to remember. This is a county endeavor. I personally have witnessed the benefits of growth, vision, and change in Waterford over the past couple years. With our new trail system, the Waterford Farmers Market, the revival of the Old Town Hall, and new businesses, and our very successful Black Bridge celebration. We are a vibrant community and are continuing with our vision. As a county, I feel that we must continue with our vision to avoid becoming stagnant and irrelevant. Social capital is vital to a community. Social capital provides us with the links, the shared values, and the understanding in a community that individuals and groups work together in a trusting and respectful manner. As the elected officials of our community, you are the leaders in our social capital. When a community is engaged, great things happen. The current dialogue surrounding the community hub is something that I have not witnessed in Norfolk County in years. I would have to guess the last time there was this, this much buzz countywide was probably the gentleman of the road, which again was a very successful endeavor. This dialogue that's currently going on includes senior citizens, youth, community groups, business owners, post-secondary institutions, nonprofit groups, the arts, and sports groups. Uh, 
To have these groups come together for a common purpose is a once in a generation opportunity. At times I understand it is difficult to ignore the negative and the detractors, but in this case the positives and the community have it right. There can truly be no dollar value placed on community engagement, well-being, vision and legacy. They're priceless. What is not priceless is a building. <laughs> So building infrastructure costs money, and that is where the community will shine. The opportunities for fundraising are endless. The fundraising is not just a necessary financial component. This allows our community to have ownership of the project. It allows for community consultation and will provide current and future residents with placemaking opportunities that will last a lifetime. In closing, I would like to thank you for your time and your consideration in this matter and respectfully request that you support Norf Norfolk County staff directive in their recommendation regarding the recreational master plan. Thank you very much, Kim. That was very short and sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions from council? If not, thank you very much for your deputation. Thank you. I need someone to move the deputation. Mayor Luke, all those in favor? It is carried. Moving on to Sue Dufresne. and I hope I pronounced that correctly, being Belgian. So. You did. <laughs> I'm excited. Good evening, everybody. I am here as a citizen of Norfolk County. And I'm here for a multitude of reasons. For the past 25 years, I've been an active volunteer in this community. As a soccer coach and a convener, I organized Mighty Might Soccers, and we had over 130 kids. And when we had that in Simcoe, we had kids coming from Waterford to play in our Mighty Mights teams, and we made sure we had places for them to play. I'm also here because I was an active member of the Simcoe Minor Baseball Executive, coach, and on the board of directors there. And when Hardball died, I'm going to correct myself, when fast ball died in Waterford, kids needed a place to play. And we made sure that kids had a place to play every time. Um, I also have three boys who play rep baseball and we have traveled all over. And it's been great because they have had made friendships for life. And those kids on that rep baseball team are not just from Simcoe. They're from Delhi. they're from uh, Waterford, they're from all over to be on these teams. Okay. And thirdly, I would like to make note is I am presently coaching an under 15 boys basketball team with my husband, and we have 12 kids on that team. 25% of those teams are from Delhi and Waterford, and we travel to different places to play. So when it comes to sports, people will travel. And I just want to make that clear. I'm also here as a recu past recreation, well, a recreational athlete and a parent of three boys. I stopped swimming at the rec center because of the heat. I couldn't swim in the pool where it was too hot because I would walk out and be sick to my stomach. So I did stop. But I do want to point out, as a mother of three active boys, I want to point out that something that Simcoe Minor Baseball has done really well. They've created teams that have brought the best athletes in Norfolk together to compete provincially and be successful. And as a past athletic director of our school board, one of the school boards here, I have been witness to hundreds and hundreds of students grow up in Norfolk County and go on to be successful. But I've also been witness to a lot of those students who have to leave Norfolk County to promote their athlete, to, to develop themselves as an athlete. For example, right now, just recently in the newspaper, it was Tommy Lamb, who has been named as Ontario University um, Athlete of the Year. He cannot come home. My son, who runs nationally, cannot come home during the winter time because they need a track to train. That's one thing we're missing here, is an indoor track that these kids can train. When they come home, they have to travel out to Hamilton, to, Bur to Brantford, to make sure that they have a training facility. And I have to let you know, for the past seven years, 
I have taken my family outside of Norfolk County. We travel to Brantford three times a week to provide sports for them. When we have two hours to kill, what do we do? We go shopping. We have to do our groceries in that time, or we go to the rec center to, to do that. So it's money being spent outside of Norfolk. And I totally believe that we can do it here, spend the money locally. As a community member who's closely approaching retirement, I know it's hard to believe, but I am, <laughs> and it's sooner than you think, I want a place that's vibrant. I want a place that is youthful. I want a place where I see people active. And I want to be able to meet my friends on that indoor track. I want to be able to play pickerball during the day. I want to be able to play pickup basketball during the day. I want a gym that we can play at. Okay? There is not a gym that people can play at during the day. I want a place where there could be a community kitchen, where there's art, where there is a culture of healthy, active lifestyle. And I imagine a facility like this. But lastly, I come as a teacher. And I come as a teacher because I've taught in Langton, I've taught in Delhi, I've taught in Waterford, I've taught many years in Port Dover, and I've taught in Walsh and in Simcoe. And each community comes with a very unique set of feeling. But they're all kids, and I want to, I want to be active. I want to activate their love for fitness and healthy lifestyle. But I just want to make sure that you understand that when students leave high school, only 25% go on to university. That's 75% of these students that either choose to live here or choose, there's 28% that go on to college or they go into trades. By bringing Fanshawe into this, this community hub, we have an opportunity to help these, to build a future for these students that we're teaching right now. It opens up unique opportunities. We have no idea what their jobs are going to be when they leave our school system. But what we know is that we can provide an education for them with Fanshawe. We have high school credits, dual credits. We have some um, special high major skills that we can build with Fanshawe so that we have opportunities. That Fanshawe is not just a default education. It's an education system where kids want to go. We have an a very unique opportunity to grow this place. And in the end, this is what I'm asking you. I'm asking you to consider the recommendations of Norfolk County. I'm asking you to get community input. That is crucial. And I'm asking you to keep Fanshawe in the loop of this, because when we open the doors to education, we develop economic results. And we open possibilities to our future. We open possibilities to these children that we teach right now. Because we know it will take a little time, but let's keep those communications open. So I'm asking you to adopt the recommendations involve the community for a community hub with Fanshawe in the loop. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Councillor uh, Wells? Uh, sorry, Councillor uh, Oliver and then the Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Sue, for your presentation. I can tell you, you had me when you said I want to be able to play pickleball during the day. I know. So that, we could be on a team. <laughs> However, I do have a legitimate question for you, though, and it relates to soccer. I flipped through the rest of our deputations, and I don't see anyone, and I apologize if there is someone, and, and I'll ask them the question as well, specifically from the soccer uh, fraternity and the soccer clubs. If we were to proceed with this project, clearly the former ice surface at the rec center and the former ice surface at Talbot Gardens would not be used or not be needed for hockey any further do you see as a former coach and still involved with soccer, is there opportunity there for indoor soccer in those former ice uh, rinks in the future that would allow year-round training for kids in soccer? Absolutely. And if you look at 
in Brantford, where I've traveled in, and also, I mean, even in Toronto at the Hoop Dome, but the Accelerator Centre, what they've done is they've taken buildings like that and they can turn it into an indoor facility. So they put down um, proper flooring and astroturf and they make it a permanent facility for soccer players. I just want a clarification. I'm no longer with soccer, but there's opportunity to turn those buildings into something more, for sure. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sue, thank you for your presentation and the work that you and Bob do uh, for our children. It's appreciated. Uh, you and I, I think, talked on the phone about three weeks ago. Actually, I think I've emailed all of you guys. Yeah, so I'll thank you for getting back to me, too. And I think we had a conversation. Yes. It was a good one, about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that you impressed me with at the end of that, and I thank you for it, is you said, whatever way this shakes down, we agreed that we need some new facilities. Well, whatever way this shakes down, you said to me, I'm here to help. And I really, really, really appreciate that attitude. Um, but I do have a question. You mentioned basketball and, and a gym, which yes. we don't currently have as a county facility. And you mentioned pickleball and a few other things. Tell us briefly how important a multi-purpose gym would be for, for us. Okay, I'm going to tell you that a gym for this community is dear to my heart. And I'm going to tell you for a couple of reasons. Because as a teacher, we build relationships with kids. And we build relationships through the gym, in the gym. Intermurals, we don't have a place for kids to go play intermurals. We don't have a place for anyone to go play pickup. Pick up volleyball, pick up basketball, pickleball, whatever there is, badminton we have in the high school one night a week. Right now, to get gym time, I'm going to be honest, it is so difficult to get a gym time. Because here's the problem. Let me just sort my thoughts. Is when you want a gym, you have to go through the county ser to community use service, right? You can get a gym at a local school for really reasonable through the week, Monday to Friday. And the reason being is because we have custodians on duty. So the cost is very limited because there's a custodian. But if we want to book a gym on a Saturday or a Sunday, it's thousands and thousands of dollars. And as a nonprofit organization that wants to provide sport for kids, we would have to charge those kids terrible, like exorbitant amounts of money. And it's not feasible. Right? Because the school and however it's worked out, the gym time is just too expensive. So we don't have gym time. And when it comes down to it also, is we have an overload of adult volleyball. Do you realize that there was a li waiting list of over 60 kids for adult volleyball? And they're coming from Langton. They're coming from Delhi. They're coming everywhere to play adult, vo adult volleyball in Simcoe. Okay, but there is not gym time available. We're fighting with each other and we make it work with our nonprofit organizations, but there isn't something. And I just want to really put this down, is right now the biggest concern in Ontario, and it's not even in Ontario, it's in the world right now. And I can say this because I was talking to someone from England this afternoon, is mental health. The mental health of our students today is it's sad right now. And you, you know what? What do kids have to do on a Friday night? What, what do we provide them in the county? Can they go to a gym to go meet up with their friends? No, that isn't an option because we don't have one, right? So putting a gym in a facility, and here's the other part, is if we put it into Fanshawe and expand with Fanshawe, look at the teams we can have at Fanshawe. We can have a basketball team from Fanshawe that can compete. There's so many opportunities with a multi-purpose gym. Okay. Thank you. No, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Thanks. Sue. Motion to receive the deputation, Councillor Columbus. All those in favor? That is carried. Ange Grant. You have 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Hello. My name is Ange Grant, and I am here today to advocate for my daughter, Kennedy, 
as well as for other families of special needs individuals. <laughs> I'm already starting. <laughs> Sorry. I'll try to keep it together. Um, and the reason I'm so emotional is because we are an underserviced and underrepresented group. <sighs> Sorry. Okay. So I have spoken to a number of families who reside in different parts of the county. Some from Dalhi, as I live in Dalhi, um, some from Waterford and Cortland and Simcoe. We want for our children, thank you. We want for our children the same thing that all of you want for your children, grandchildren, and other loved ones. Thank you. Um, thanks. We want opportunity. Seems simple, opportunity. Opportunity to have meaningful activities to participate in that will give a sense of accomplishment and purpose. Opportunity for social interactions within their community that are beyond their family connections. An opportunity for recreational and leisure pursuits. I believe this will lead to them having a better quality of life and to the ultimate goal of happiness. I am concerned that this might not be attainable in Norfolk County unless changes occur. Currently, there are not adequate opportunities in Norfolk for someone with Kennedy's level of functioning. Other families with similar needs are traveling daily to Brantford to access a program at Crossing All Bridges for their loved ones. We, as well, have visited this facility because Kennedy is just one, just over one year out of being out of high school. And we see that program as her best option at this time. Unfortunately, we have also considered moving out of Norfolk due to a lack of possibility for Kennedy here. She has been underserviced her entire life. We have, for 19 years, traveled great distances in order to give her the care and interventions that she requires. And I don't begrudge doing that. But we have to think about a time when we are not able to, or around to, that we can't fill in the gaps forever. And I say, unfortunately, because I don't want to move out of Delhi. I've lived in Delhi my entire life. It's where my family is. It's where my entire social network is. But if there's not opportunity for Kennedy here, that is what we might have to do. So what do I hope to see? I understand from attending the information session on Saturday, as well as through the news and social media, that a community hub proposal has been developed. If this were, were realized in one multi-use complex, my greatest desire would be that an integral part would be room for and accommodations made to service this vulnerable population. Recreational facilities alongside a daily program would make participation in her community easier for Kennedy and others like her who have mobility issues. A partnership with Fanshawe could prove to be an ideal situation as they offer diploma programs for personal support workers, who I currently employ, developmental service workers, and social service workers who would all benefit from experiential learning opportunities with someone like my daughter. And I have to say as well, um, these programs also, their educational needs also, they work with the senior population. We would love to see uh, a shallow warm water or therapy pool um, that has easy accessibility and that is widely available. I know the swimmers, sorry, no offense to you guys. Um, you say it's too warm. Most days it's too cold for Kennedy. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, 
Um, yeah, so a, a warmer water or therapy pool would be amazing. Um, a walking track and exercise facilities that she, they could take use of. Um, we would like to see a snoozeland room. I know many of you might not know what that is. Um, it's specifically something that a lot of children with autism or 